Hello everyone, I'm Brazen Eagle and thanks for joining me here. From usnews.com, we have an article that states that Social Security is to exceed its income by 2020 and run out by 2034. An increase in the number of retirees and a decrease in the number of working adults will contribute to the depletion of the program's funds. Well, let's go over this article real quick. The cost of paying Social Security benefits in 2012 will, of course, exceed the amount of income the program collects for the first time since 1982. The 2019 annual report from the program's trustees, published this past Monday, states that the shortage would force the program to dip into its $2.9 trillion trust fund in order to cover benefits. However, the trust fund would only cover benefits through 2034 before being depleted itself. The trustees recommend that lawmakers address the projected trust fund shortfalls in a timely way in order to re in, in order to phase in necessary changes gradually and give workers and beneficiaries time to adjust to them, the report said. Implementing changes sooner rather than later would allow more generations to share in the needed revenue increases or reductions in scheduled benefits of Social Security's two funds, one for the retirees and one for people claiming disability, the retirement funds are expected to be, paid, to be paid fully through 2034 and disability funds through 2052. However, past those dates, legislative action will be needed to prevent reserve depletion. The costs of Social Security are expected to increase as a wave of baby boomers retires, dramatically increasing the number of beneficiaries cashing in on the program. The report states that from 2019, our current year, to 2038, Costs will rise rapidly because the rate at which baby boomers will retire will be faster than the increase in the number of workers due to the recent decline in birth rates. But according to last year's report, the disability fund portion of Social Security was predicted to run out in 2032. However, the fewer, there were fewer disability applications and incidences have extended the fund's lifespan, which is good. Social Security's cost as a share of the country's gross domestic product will grow from 4.9% in 2019 to about 5.9% by 2039. It is then expected to decline at 5.8% by 2052. In addition to Social Security, the report states that Medicare's hospital insurance funds will be depleted in 2026, a few years away, the same year as last year's report predicted. Additionally, the fund's costs are expected to increase. Wow. So... Before I begin, I want to clarify that I don't want to dehumanize anybody, but I'm just crunching the numbers. So, first of all, when the money runs out, beneficiaries of the Social Security program will only receive between 75% to 79% of scheduled benefits beginning in 2035. For comparison, I tried to look this up earlier, but uh, the average retiree in 2019 will get $1,422 a month in Social Security benefits. But of course, with the cost of living adjustment for the year, the figure rises to $1,461 a month for a grand total in 2019 of $17,532 a year. That is the average amount of money a Social Security uh, recipient gets a year, or at least in 2019. That's not a lot of money. That really is not a lot of money at all. I don't know what the poverty line is, what, what the poverty line is, but it's either below it or close to below. And the seniors beginning in 2035 will only receive 75% of benefits that are calculated with the cost of living adjustment. This is calculated if there's no alternation, of course, to the current Social Security program. As you can tell, probably from the sound of my voice and the information I just told you, this is a recipe for a disaster. Because we have had a below replacement fertility rate since the early 1970s, we have had less native-born American workers who could have continued or at least paid into the system. Instead, we opened up mass immigration to ensure that our population keeps growing. Now, before I go further, I'm just saying, or at least I'm not saying, that immigration is a cause of the social security crisis. It is not. But immigration since the mid-1960s, I'm talking about legal immigration, could have had a minor positive financial benefit. But of course, illegal immigrants cost the taxpayers billions of dollars that come from other government programs. However, 
At this point, any immigration, any legal immigration, will not cover the projected costs of Social Security. It's projected that by 2031, the youngest baby boomers that reach age 67 and can receive full Social Security benefits will be at a total population of 58.2 million Americans from the PRB.org uh, website. This will, of course, quickly deplete the Social Security surplus that has been built up since its inception, or at least since 1982. Now, before I go into solutions, I want to tell you that, yes, people believe that Social Security was an insurance program when it was first enacted. The government said that as long as you worked, you would receive money in return. The government didn't lie, but the government misled the people. You will get money from the government, but not nearly the worth of money you were taxed to fund the system. Many people will believe that they earned this money. Yes, people worked and paid their taxes in the past. But the value of money paid to the government is not the same value of money the government hands out to retirees at a later date. I would also argue that who would you prefer to have that money? You or the government? Who spends that money better? You or the government? I also want to say that I don't want your money, okay? I, money doesn't buy me happiness. If anything, unless you're unemployed, I make less money than you do. Trust me. I guarantee it. But now for some solutions. Not my personal solution, but, a solu but solutions that have been presented. The first one really isn't a solution, but the default if we don't do anything. If we do nothing, then the recipients of the Social Security system will only get 75% of scheduled benefits and, of course, will be unhappy. The degree of unhappiness amongst the people, or I guess retirees, that claim they work for their full benefits will be seen, of course, in 2035. These retirees will want to tax the younger people who are still working in order to get their supposed benefits. By 2035, that will probably happen. Now, for a second solution. Raise taxes. At the moment, most U.S. workers pay 6.2% of their income to the Social Security tax. The employer of each worker also pays, let's see, where's my mouse? Pays 6.2% of the employee's wage for a combined total of 12.4% of the entire employee's wage to a maximum wage base. A wage base is the amount of money you earned at a certain point that is not subject to the Social Security tax. Uh, let's see, yes, this is the one I wanted. Which, the wage base or Social Security maximums. So it's basically the same things. For example, in 2019 here, if you made less than $132,900, if you made less than that, you would pay 6.2% of your income to the Social Security tax. If you earned this number or more, you would pay 6.2% of $132,900. You cannot get taxed any more money than this number if you made more than that much. But this is, of course, 2019. It increases, obviously, every single year since its inception. Basically, the wage base is the maximum amount of money that Social Security can tax. The most likely tax increase, of course, is to remove the wage base. For example, if you, like I said earlier, if you made a million dollars a year, you would pay 6.2% of that one million dollars to the Social Security Administration. Obviously, that's much more money tax than the wage base in 2019, but that still is money taken away that could be further invested in the economy. I could go further on about this, but let's go on to the next solution. Thirdly, the government could raise the minimum age you must be before you can claim Social Security benefits. At the current moment, let's look it up. Minimum age, minimum age for Social Security benefits. See, the full benefit age was traditionally 65, with you being able to claim Social Security benefits at age 62, which, of course, you would get a reduction in benefits. The full benefit age is currently, apparently, 66 years old and two months. Wow, they're getting months down, too. 
and will gradually rise to 67 for those born in 1960 or later. Uh, the government could, of course, raise the minimum age to something like 68, 69, 70 even. But that does re that overall does reduce the money disimbursed to retirees for a while, but this solution kind of just delays Social Security solvency. So, this obviously wouldn't really help us in the long run. Now, here's my solution. Now, before I talk about my solution, I just want to tell you guys this. Because I understand that people were misled by the government, especially back when this was first enacted, and want what they supposedly are owed because they worked for it, as well as understand that this type of social security doesn't work, here's my solution that is a work in progress. Now, what I would do if I was, you know, the god emperor that could change everything, if I was the legislative branch as well as the executive branch, I would raise the wage base from its current number for the year to half a million dollars. If we need more money to fully cover Social Security, then I just remove the wage base completely. I will also phase out Social Security, at least this current system. Now, I would make it a law that say starting in 2020, Americans born after that year would continue to contribute to the Social Security system via a tax, excuse me, via a tax, but will not benefit from the system now because every American would have their own personal private but federally backed insurance account I would say that in the end when we phase out Social Security five to ten percent of your income will be taxed basically to an individual retirement account that you cannot access until you reach a certain age this way the money is in a bank or a financial institution that is federally backed so you will never lose that money much like a bank account that can accrue interest. At any time, you can see how much money you have earned and that you will have in the future. It is your own personal account that you can see how much money that you have earned and how much money you will get in the future. It is your money. This way, the money that is taken out of your paycheck is literally growing as you get older and is yours right now the social security tax that every worker pays goes into a general revenue fund it, there's no personal account my system will incentivize people to work for their retirement so that they know where their money is right now your money if you of course if you're working just goes into a general fund but like i said this is a work in progress i offer my solution because unlike politicians i actually care about the nation. And I'm going to be here in the nation for quite a while. I'm not dying anytime soon, I hope. Or retiring. Or anything like that. I've got a long time before I get really, really old. But anyways, I just want Americans to individually be responsible for themselves and, all, and have a solution to a coming and growing problem. But of course, as we loom closer to 2035, people will want reforms regarding their money and I will be waiting with my solution that hopefully will be more or less worked out. But until then, thank you very much for watching, guys. I am Brazen Eagle, and I hope you have a great day.